Hello ladies and gentlemen. This morning, the first of several examples using visual tools to support us in handling data. In this one, I'm using observable, observablehq.com, which is a tool where you can program visualizations mixing techniques that you see out of spreadsheets and techniques you see in programming languages. So I've got here a small number of examples, notebooks as Observer calls them, and we're going to work on this one because, uh, well, it's on everyone's mind at the moment, although you might be tired of it. Observable works like this. It has a number of cells. I highlight them as I move down. And each of these cells is programmable. It is Excel-like in that you can easily refer from one cell to another to get a calculation done. It's also programming-like in that each cell is programmed. I'm going to show you how to add one. I can do things like type a calculation, I do 2 plus 2, and when I press this, it executes the cell and I get the result. I can hide the code for the cell so that when I work on something else it hides or it should hide. There it is, finally hiding. I can also include some markdown things. This is markdown. And we can set variables. And we can move cells easily up and down. It's not like a spreadsheet in that it's not a grid, but it is like a spreadsheet in that it doesn't matter where up or down a given cell is. You can refer from one cell to another one. So here if I do two plus X, I'm going to get an error message because there isn't an X. But if I do anywhere, X equal two, and execute this, then suddenly, so x is two, and this is four, two plus x, x is whatever that is. Okay, let's get rid of these things, which just get in the way. Yes, delete it, and that recreates the error, but we're going to delete this one as well. This is a simple way to actually load and then visualize things like the number of people who are currently ill of coronavirus, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you what kind of sources I use, what has been assembled together to get this particular visualization and a small modification. So we have picked Thailand because it's there and it shows me the number of current cases. Watch the scale because it is logarithmic. So it doesn't look like it's going up very fast, but actually it is. Right now, some of the sources and what is being used to get this stuff. First of all, I'll put the link to this page and a small number of other things in description. But since the cells can be in any order, any uninteresting stuff, noisy code I call it here, uh, is at the bottom of this page. First of all, I created a variable which is called data source and which loads the COVID-19 data from a source on GitHub. Time series 19 COVID confirmed .csc. But the GitHub CSSEGIS account is gathering some of the data about the coronavirus epidemic, and that data is public. That's one of the things that I wanted to point out, that a tool like Observable makes it quite easy to load a number of separate things, like data sources that are available in public, and a lot of data sources are available in public. It's obvious now with the current epidemic, for example, and also things like means to visualize and means to actually display data and to process it and so on. So now I'm going to jump to the bottom of this where we'll see a list of some of the libraries used. Let's scroll down, 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 down. All the data libraries, functions and boring operations. Okay, so there is one for selecting the data, uh, get the list of countries, a filter that gets only certain areas, like I filtered Thailand earlier. Prepare data, which is a big function that extracts the interesting parts so that we can load things. For the plot that you saw earlier, we use a library called Vega Lite. In Observable, one of the advantages of the system is if you have an account and create some functions that could be of interest to other people, you can very easily arrange things so that other people can actually import your function. So you might be add 
your username slash a certain page. Vega Light is a well-known set of tools for displaying, uh, for displaying graphs. And then within that, you might have a function here, V1, and we're importing this one. Then we're also importing a set of data utilities, actually mainly print table that has been created by the University of Washington, uh, Washington State, not Washington DC. And we're importing D3. D3 is a tool that is particularly famous for 3D graphs and various things like that. It is very good for creating maps, for example, but it has a very good CSV import tool. And there's a guy called Javier Ashkenas who has created input functions, functions to handle all the form information and this sort of things. So I'm using a select one. Let's go back and see where I'm using all of those sorts of things. This is where I'm using select. Javier Esquenas functions. Just below, this is where I'm using print table. And I'm using print table in one more place, which is here. This is created using Vega Light. And if you want to see where I'm using D3 and tools like these, we'll look at the code of this d3.csv and the data source is just the URL. So someone else, the D3 library, has done all the hard work of organizing the asynchronous loading of CSV data and its parsing and all of that kind of things. And so I can do something as simple as this and I get all of this data as a result. Right. Now that we've got a little bit of an idea how this is organized, let's do a little bit of change. So just to show an, some examples of some of the things that uh, can be done to this. So one of them is that the order of the countries here is a bit, little bit silly because it shows Thailand and then Japan and then Singapore. It's because when the countries are being taken out of the, uh, of the data, they are put in there in the order where they appear. It would be nice to actually get them sorted. So let's have a look at the source code that is in there by editing it. And it says here, okay, so it's a select. It calls a function to get a list of countries called get countries with the list of, uh, uh, with the list of data. Uh, what else is there? Oh, choose countries, the title, yeah, I can see that. Oh, and it's a multi-select as well. So I can actually do this, use uh, the control key and pick two and yeah I've got both of them and I've got size 10 so if I decide that the select is too big it's too small that's easily changed here let's play with it I'll replace that with 12 it's not going to make that much difference but there it is a little bit bigger and I need to select my countries again there and I've got a list of two yeah okay nice I can compare them to each other I can see that Singapore has got a little fewer cases although the two countries don't have the same population so i don't quite know how that compares anyway but they are in the same region and the epidemic seems to have started around about the same time for them we said we wanted to get the list of countries here in some more sensible order i could change that here but let's see where the function get countries is when i scrolled down earlier we flew past get countries. There it is. Get countries is a function. Let's hope the function is not too big. It's not too big. Let result equal. Okay, it goes through the table, picks up something called country region from it, pushes it into a set of results, and then returns the result. No, I want the results sorted. I'm hoping that that will be enough. And it is enough. Nice. So now they are in alphabetic order. And I suppose if a country is not here, that's because they are lucky and the epidemic hasn't reached them yet. Is that all we can do? Let's have a look at where the UK is. You like a c 
Ah. Oh. There we are. We are. Oh, it's looking a bit funny. Scroll down a bit. It's looking a bit funny. Ah, that's because all of our data here, there's not just the UK, but there's also various dependent territories. Uh, I never quite understand the political geography of the UK well enough, but I guess, you know, crown dependencies or whatever they are, places that are not quite the UK, but that are the UK for the purposes of recording this data. It makes the graph jump up and down because, well, there are quite a few cases on the mainland or England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, but there's a small number of them in places like the Channel Islands, Gibraltar and so on. Let's jump sideways and let's see. Okay, so I guess this is Great Britain and Northern Ireland and the 10, 11, 10, 3 and 1, that's um, the Channel Islands and Montserrat and uh, Gibraltar and I can't quite remember in what order that is. Okay, Gibraltar, 10 cases. Oh yes, they're close to Spain. It would be nice to actually add up all of these sorts of things so that we see not separate ones, but a single graph, a single line for the country. This adding up, it's going to be, uh, what data is being shown in here? Uh, why it is, isn't it showing that I'm editing? Oh yes, there it is, there it is. Uh, I need to scroll down. It is using V1, which is this Vega function. Okay, there's a mark line and set the X field and the, uh, and the Y field. The scale is logarithmic. Um, and I'm setting the title here. Uh, and ah, the data is something called p data. So I need to go and find that p data variable. And if I'm going to make it better, change that variable. Let's move to the bottom where all the interesting functions are, or depending on your point of view, the boring functions are. And we should find aha, p data. P data, okay, calls a function which is called prepare data. And prepare data is right here. Okay, I did that. Ooh, what an ugly function. Ugly function, which I might have to explain a little too fast here. Let's see, but it is preparing the data. It starts with a result that is nothing. Table, all right, we, it, it receives a list of data, which is table, and then it goes through every line of that table, and in each line through every key, key. Ah, key are things like province slash state or region, latitude, longitude, and then more. Where's my data? I need to have a look at the data I'm passing to this to understand. Filtered data. Where is filtered data? Filtered data is this. I should be able to display it. Ah, there it is. Uh, so filtered data, for example, is a set of objects. So that's my lines, I guess. Uh, and then each line contains province, state, and then country, region, and then latitude, and then longitude. Is that? Ah, scroll sideways. And then, okay, 22 January, 23 January, 24 January, 25 January, right, a bunch of dates, a whole lot of dates, presumably until now, ending no, it's ending with zero. Oh, no, no, that is 6 February, but actually there's a dot, dot, dot. So there's more, but I get it. it each line is one country and region with where it is and a little bit of information like that. And then a whole series of dates with how many cases. So now if I have a look at this, Let's take a look at this function again. Right, we go through the lines and in each line we pick up information like the country, the region, the latitude, the longitude. In fact, if key is not that. 
so we pick up anything but these that is we're going to pick up every one of the dates bars end line for the date it's a number of course it's a number so we pass the number and if it's more than zero we record it right get the country get the date which is the key of the object we're going through yeah okay make this object contain the country the number of cases and push that in the result so we get a series of things where the result is shown in a slightly different way what does speed data look like there it is right we've reordered things with date country one case and the next object is date country one case and so on and that's the data that we can plot but we say that we wanted to rearrange this information so that when two objects when two pieces of information where it's the same country the same date a different province and state things get added up instead of recording two different objects with two different number of cases for the same country i pre-prepared a little bit of code here so that we can get this done relatively quick let me show you this and put it sideways the trick is going to be this once we've picked up the country if we want to find out if there's another object with the same date and the same country that's already there so if that object exists there it is we've got our results uh, in progress we're going to filter through these results and through these results we're looking for cases where the date is already the same and where the country is already the same if we pick up one of those results there's only one like that if we pick up one of those results then we will add it to the existing cases if there isn't one of those results then we need it's a new country and a new and a new date or not a new country so but it's a new country or a new date of an existing country and then in that case we make one more object to stick into the result one more cases for the part for this particular date okay so I need to place this copy that copy I need to place this here it's messed up the layout let's clean up the layout as we explain what goes on so we pick up the country and we've already picked up the number of cases and key is the date key is the date C here is the number of cases there's more than zero country is the country we take the results so far we filter them looking for an object that has the same date he and the same country if there is one then ref the country we need to reference is an array that contains one element so if there's an array that contains one element we pick up this one element and we add to its cases the cases we've just found in our data otherwise there isn't that date and that country already in our data so we make an object with that country and with that number of cases I'll keep that because it's nice to have this idea of organizing sub parts of a country I'll keep it for another day you think and we add the object and of the else case oh there's old stuff here the count we've already got it the cases we've already got it the 
commented sub area thing we've already got it I think I left out something to do with the date here cut this out of here put it inside the case that we were working on all right and we now have a new function prepare data and if I click this I hope I've not made copy errors it's not complaining yet but it's not changed either oh dear what have I done uh, let, let's see if I pick another country and then return to the UK and we'll see what happens no it's still happening the same P what's P data doing there so this is prepare the data right let's get some information about what's going on console dot log found more uh, we need to add the developer information press this runs but does not display anything so if it does not display anything then none of this is happening let's see if I can log ref and up found RA etc 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 if length is one ah okay let's start off here found RA empty 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 up uh, uh, we've got an idea press uh, cancel this empty this and again because I don't know where this starts okay empty at the beginning and then suddenly it finds two why does it find zero and then two of them it's never triple equal to one mm -hmm. so you replace this with a greater than, than zero and let's see if we can actually catch clear this up okay this time it says found more but still it does this strange thing ah I know what I've done this result push object which is there twice I don't need to push the new object twice I do it here if it's a new object but I don't do it here or otherwise we push two new objects each time ref length equal one okay it's saying plenty of things about how it arranges the object P data now contains the kind of data we'd expect it takes a little bit of time to find out how many cases and sort of things but the line here is neat ah good i'm going to clean this up by taking out the console log or commenting out good practice to comment out means to debug rather than remove you know, consumes quite a bit of time for the machine let's close those tools so we can see better what goes on and let's give it a whirl for one last time so here we can see the number of cases in the uk and I wonder how that compares to countries that we know there's France where we know that things are more difficult it doesn't look like much higher but it is in logarithmic scale Germany seems to be moving in step with France here and uh, ahead of the UK there's Italy ahead of them both so there's, a, there's our data it appears that the UK is behind yet it is behind in that it got few its first cases later if I shifted this curve from where it is a few days earlier it looks like its shape is very much like that of Spain and France and Germany keep your hands washed yeah 
thank you for taking a look at this do comment in the in the youtube comment things ask questions follow up the links that i will put in description and i hope you found this interesting there will be more soon about a, a much more visual tool called orange and about using more mathematical techniques both in observable and then later in orange